So the first thing we're going to do is save each of our images, every assignment that you've done in the class, as a flattened PDF. So I made a folder and keep everything in the same folder. That would mean all of your images that you're working with and your InDesign document. So with your Photoshop files, the assignments that were done in Photoshop, you go to File, Save As, and you navigate to your folder. I called mine Files for InDesign, and I have a separate folder, PDFs and JPEG, and I'm going to save as Photoshop PDF. Okay, PDF, and I'm going to uncheck the Layers box. So it's a flattened PDF, okay? Very important. So we don't have to work with all these individual layers. We just have one single uh, flattened PDF image. Okay, and I'm saving it to my folder. Save. That's okay. And high quality print is good for PDF preset. And hit Save PDF. That's okay. Now I'll go to Illustrator and we just want to prepare an, a PDF file. So for Illustrator, we go to File, Save As, and we choose Adobe PDF, and we will save it. So I want to change it to Project 4. Hit Save, and I will choose High Quality Print again. Hit Save PDF, and there you go. So you want to do that with each of your Illustrator assignments. So we go back to our folder here, and we have PDFs and JPEG. So we should see project one, two, three, four, five, and six as PDFs, flattened PDFs, no layers. So we're opening up our InDesign document. I click on the InDesign icon and we'll hit create new or let's go to file new old school file new document and we can pick print as a shortcut letter size is fine and let's see inches rather than picas which is a uh, printer measurement so now we can see it's eight and a half by eleven orientation vertical and this is important. We want four pages. It's going to be a four page brochure portfolio. And make sure that facing pages is checked. Okay, facing pages is checked because pages two and three will be a two page spread, as we'll see. Next, do two columns. And let's go with. Uh, 0.25 inches, a quarter inch. And where it says bleed and slug, click that little arrow to open it up, see? And we're going to give it a bleed. I just need to click it once. Um, so it'll be a 0.125 or an eighth inch bleed. And I'll explain what that is in a minute, okay? And since this chain is here and selected, then it makes them all uniform. So I just did the one under top, but it makes all of them change. And then hit Create. And then just to make sure that we're saving it into our folder, let's go Save As. And you should call it your name. I'll call mine Demo. Demo Ligon Project 7. Okay. And I'm saving it to that folder. Files for InDesign was what I called it. And I'll just save it to the general folder. And now I have an InDesign document. And the InDesign document, here I can scroll down. Here's page one. Here's pages two and three. That two page spread I was talking about. And then page four. The final page. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up to page one, and we're just going to put your identity logo on page one as like an introduction or a cover. Okay, so the way we would do that 
in in design I'm, cl I'm clicking on that black arrow the selection tool and I'm going to go to file place file place and then I'm going to go to my PDFs and JPEGs folder okay where all my stuff is and that logo I think is project 5 I'm previewing it just to make sure and I'm going to uncheck the box that says replace selected item because if you accidentally have something selected then it'll make it disappear and replace it with something else so I'm unchecking that and I'm going to hit open and when I hit open I have this little my cursor is kind of loaded with it's showing me this image so I could do two things this is a big high resolution image so if I just went click it would appear big but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it approximately the size that I would want it by clicking holding down and dragging a rectangle to show what size I'd like the image to be and you can grab it from any place inside to move it except do you see the little circle within a circle you don't want to move it from there the reason is like you can reposition an image inside of its box right so that would look cool as a design you know in some cases to recrop an image that way but not for us in this particular instance okay so I can select the box and I can move that around and you have to be careful because the box kind of works independently of the image I'm gonna make sure I can see the rest of that there see that now if you want to resize the image after the fact you can do that but if you just go over here and then resize stuff like you would in Illustrator or Photoshop uh, then it just resizes the box I'll show you see so again it didn't resize the image it just resizes the box and both of those things in design are, are handy options so if you hold the command and shift button though that means you can resize the image right so you can resize it and place it um, how you want so command and shift if you want to write that down that's going to be important because you're going to do a lot of resizing and moving images around command shift and then resize and that's all there is to it for page one that was easy right so we did something good so we're going to file save so we don't lose our work now comes the harder part we're going to scroll over here to page two and three so we're going to design our two page spread which will contain body copy or text in paragraphs a headline and all of our images from our portfolio except for the logo image which we've already used on page one so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flow text so hopefully by this point you've done your artist statement a one page document and you've saved it as a word document so that we can import it directly uh, into InDesign so this is what we do we go to file place I'm going to go look for my word document generic art text no format and that's okay it says I'm missing that that font but I'm gonna change the font anyway okay so now my cursor is loaded like it was loaded with the image but it's with text right and since we picked two columns you can see each page is already divided into two columns these lines don't print they're just guidelines so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a rectangle that's the size of that first paragraph and the reason it is outlined in pink is because we don't have that typeface okay so I'm gonna change the typeface now might as well uh, get it over with uh, instead of Calibri that's missing over here I'll just pick something easy right now pick Arial okay and in the properties panel you can adjust a lot of stuff based it's contextual so if I'm working with text then it's going to be all the typesetting stuff and uh, we'll right now I'll just I won't touch it anymore I've given it uh, a typeface that we know we have on the computer and uh, if you see this little plus down here that means that there wasn't enough room for all the text on your document 
that there's more text that needs to be flowed. So what you can do is you can click on that plus, click, see how my cursor is loaded again, and I can draw a second panel here. Okay, and uh, now we don't see the plus, so that means there's enough uh, enough uh, room to have everything on there. So you have to be careful that you don't cut off your text. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and um, shorten it a little bit. I'm going to just delete. I'm cheating, right? Because mine's a little longer than yours would be. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make room because we want uh, text boxes that are going to be smaller uh, in here. And then on top of that, I want to I want to spread out the text a little bit and make it a little bit more spacious and elegant. OK, so uh, one thing you, you, you'll notice since we linked these text boxes, if we make one text box, um, if we make one text box uh, larger or smaller, text doesn't fit in it as much, uh, then it would make the other the other text flow into the other piece. So uh, you can select all. You can either do this and do select all at the top, or you can go like this. Click, 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 click until everything is uh, is selected. OK, so what I'm going to do, this is the type size. OK, so I'm going to reduce it to about 10 points. OK, and you can notice the type reflowing as it becomes smaller. So uh, don't make your type much smaller than 10 point uh, because uh, it becomes hard to read. Uh, right here is uh, the letting. The letting is the space between lines. OK, so I'm going to make a lot more uh, negative space between the lines. I'm just going to click on the up arrow and you can watch the type reflow. And I'm going to keep going until it's about I'm going to even do like, I'll just do 20 point. OK, so it has a little bit more space, a little more air to breathe. Next, I'm going to bring the text down because we're going to flow it a little differently. So you can see it reflowing. And there are rule lines like there are rule lines in um, Photoshop and Illustrator and they're available by default and you can just reach into the ruler like I did and bring down a line so that way I can do this one and reduce it so they line up okay and if it doesn't line up quite perfectly you can use the up and down arrows to line it up perfectly okay now notice there's a plus so I need to reflow to a third column OK, and I'm going to bring down another rule line, make sure everything is lined up OK. And then here's a fourth line. So I might need more space and I might need less space than this. And the reason being, I'm going to flow some pictures into this later. So we'll see how much space that I end up uh, needing. Now we're going to make a headline. So I want to select the type tool. So I could just go over here and click on the T or I could hit the, the keyboard letter T, T, and it's like an automatic selection, which is convenient. Uh, so now I'm going to click, hold and draw a text box over here and I'm going to let go. And this is an alternate way of doing text. So for the body copy, the paragraphs I did uh, file place and then I place the text. The alternative would be to draw out some blank text boxes and then copy and paste into it or just type. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to type nature and imagination. OK. And I'm going to select it like I would a word processor and I'm going to adjust. First, I'm going to pick a typeface that I think is more appropriate. I'm going to go with uh, Monaco. And uh, of course, you'll spend a lot of time thinking about that and looking at them and seeing what typefaces you have available. Uh, but I knew in advance I wanted Monaco and I'm going to increase the text size until it gets to the point of almost filling the box. 
If I fill it too much, it's either going to go onto a second line or disappear completely. So if that happens, just start reducing the type size until you see your image again. Okay. And I'm going to click on the selection arrow and I'm going to bring the text box up a little bit so I don't have that extra space. And now I can position this however I want. Okay. So now we're ready to import our artwork into our InDesign document. So we go to File, Place, and we go to the right folder, right? And this time I'm going to select things by holding down the Command key so I can select some things but not other things uh, because I want to select Project 4 and Project 2 and Project 6 and Project 3 and Project 1. Not 5 because that's the logo project that we already put on the first page. Okay. And press Open. And you can do these all separately. You could go and, and place each one separately if you found it uh, easier and less confusing. But I'm going to do all at once. I hit Open. And then my cursor is loaded with my first artwork. And I'm clicking, holding, and drawing down to make a small image. Because if I went click, it would make it the size of the page or bigger, whatever size the actual document happens to be. And we don't want that. We want them small. We can always scale them up because they are high resolution images. But we just want them small now so we can see them all on the page. So I'm clicking one after the other. Right. So this is what happens when you select more than one image and do place. And then I'm going to draw this one a little bit bigger. Okay. So got all the images in. I'm going to hit save so I don't lose my work. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to make all of the images have a wrap around them. Okay. So that means when I move them into the, the text, that the text will flow around them instead of do that. Right. So uh, I'm going to select each of these artworks and I'm going to go to text wraps. Remember all of the stuff in the properties panel is contextual. So when I have images, there's a lot of stuff about images. So the text wrap I want is the second icon. And if you put your mouse over it, it says wrap around bounding box, click. And then this down here is how much space you want around the image. So I'm going to click the up arrow and make again about a point uh, 0 0.125 inches, which is an eighth of an inch. So that means if I go down to the type now, do you see how it wraps around and it gives it an eighth of an inch space. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the wraps around each of the other ones. Second choice and 0.125. This one wrap around the bounding box, 0.125. This one, wrap around the bounding box, 0.125. Yeah. This one, wrap around the bounding box, 0.125. Okay, so each one of those should have a wrap. So now I'm going to move this one. Again, I'm not going to grab it by that middle circle. It looks tempting, right? But if I did that, I would just be moving the image in the bounding box. Select again and move this down. Okay, so you can see the wrap around it. And I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. And do you remember what I said? You have to hold down Command and Shift to scale the image rather than just the box. I'm going to make this bigger so it goes into that a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to move this one over slightly just for a minute. And notice I'm lining them up with these red lines or trying to. And I'm using the uh, 
black arrows to line them up perfectly. The red lines are the bleed lines because in commercial printing, like four color printing, like a brochure or a magazine or something like that, you have a bleed. And that what that means is there are mechanical blades and the mechanical blades cut the edges, right? And if you have an image that is just going to the edge of your document, then it's likely that those blades will miss and you'll have like some white space at the edge of your document. So to make sure that the document is cut cleanly and, and goes right off the edge, uh, then you have bleed lines. So you have to allow an extra eighth of an inch. And assuming your blades are accurate, you're going to lose a little tiny bit of your image. And that's just the way things are set up in, uh, in commercial printing. Okay, so we're going to, we included the bleed lines if you set up the document the way I was guiding you through it at the beginning. And we're lining up with those red lines, which are the bleed lines. So you have a little extra, a uh, little extra room and we make sure our images are, are cut cleanly at the end. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm, I've lined it up with the, the red bleed, bleed lines, right, going off the page. And I'm selecting, holding down Command and Shift. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, or a lot bigger. Make it a little smaller. And then I can see with the plus that I don't have enough room for all my type anymore, right? So I could do a few things, like I could cheat, I could uh, combine paragraphs, selecting the type tool, and I'm going to do a little word processing here. And I'm going to combine those paragraphs and see if that works. Um, then I could select all. I'll do edit select all this time. You can do command A too. And Let's see what it's like if I do a nine point. Okay, uh, I'm going to type in 9.5 because I'm trying to make it flow nicely. And I think I can, so you can kind of fudge it a little bit. Um, let me see what that looks like. Okay, so even though it says there's a plus, it's just space. I can see that that's the end. So meaning is my last word, and that, that flows pretty well. So that's pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is reposition these little images and resize. I'm going to start with this one over here, because I like how the, the uh, green over here matches up with the green over here. I'm going to put this one second. And again, I want them to line up with the bleed lines. So I'm going to move them up a little bit. And I'm going to select this one and move that. Okay. And I'm eyeballing to try to get the space consistent with all three of these. And then move it up so it's lined up and I could put a rule line down here. These don't print, they're just guides. So I can see if everything is lined up right. Okay. I can see I need to scoot this one up a little bit more. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these things. I'm holding down shift to select all three. Now I'm holding down command shift and I'm scaling all of them and I'm trying to get so there is a, about the same amount of space here as here. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. So now they're all aligned with the bleed line. So they would get cut off. Right. And, um, and that way they just bleed right off the page, which is a nice look. So, um, one thing about InDesign, it's hard to see quite how this will look, right? Because all of our images are going off the page. We have a bleed line, we have rule lines, we have the column lines. So there's all this stuff that doesn't really print, right? And this plus warning that uh, thinks that there's more text, even though there's not, there's just a, a line of space. Uh, so what would it really look like? And the quick way to preview it is just hit the W key. So I'm about to hit W, W. 
and there's what it looks like for print, right? So you can see that looks pretty clean, pretty nice. So it's a double page spread and it's it's representing your artwork and your artist statement goes here talking about your your beliefs and your your work and all of that stuff. So now we're ready for page four, which will be simple. I'm going to scroll down here. And if all goes well, you'll have a screenshot of your HTML project that you're going to do in class. So we'll do file, place, and put it here on the back, page four. And that one is HTML example. I'll hit open and I'll just draw that out. You can see the image with code and then I'm going to do a little text box at the bottom and this is all in your uh, assignment sheet too by the way. So it be your name typing my name and digital one and project seven colon text and image okay and when we select this we're going to make it Arial because we want it to be the same um, the same typeface that we used in the other pages for the body copy right for consistency make things consistent including spacing and everything else uh, whenever possible uh, I'm gonna go over here where it says paragraph and make it centered okay and then I'm just gonna position it a little better and I'm looking for making the space up at the top about the same as the other spaces on either side consistent unless there's a reason not to okay and this one I think I'm gonna make bold I'm gonna select and instead of regular I'm gonna make it bold and I'm done and I hit save So now um, we're going to do one more step. You're going to make a high quality print PDF. And what that does is basically it makes a big uh, flat high quality image that you could give to a printer to print. And the advantages of that, uh, besides the fact that they might not be able to print directly from an InDesign document, is that all of your images here are in the same folder. So InDesign knows where to find them. But if we were uh, to, if you were to just hand me the InDesign document, uh, but not in the folder with all of the images, then it wouldn't know where to find the images, right? So what you see, here's a version with all of the uh, images not being able to be found. So you see these little question marks on each of the things. So you still see the images, but uh, if you were to try to print them, this is just like a, a screen capture kind of image. It, it wouldn't be the full high resolution image because they're no longer linked. They're no longer, they can't find where they are. Okay. And also, uh, if you hand me a document like this, I might or might not have the typeface that you've used too. Right. So the solution and the, the method of, uh, providing something to a printer is to make a high quality print PDF. Okay. So you go to file export and we can leave it the same title but choose format Adobe PDF print okay down here make sure you're saving it into your folder so you know where it is hit save I've already done this once so I'm hitting replace uh, so under general here you want to pick PDF high quality print high quality print up here okay and then pick spreads on pages, pick layout, two page continuous facing. So I can see your nice two page spread. Then click on the word marks and bleeds and select crop marks, bleed marks, 
in this box right here that says use document bleed settings. Then I'll hit export. That's all you need to change. And it's giving me this warning again. Overset text means it thinks that there's text that isn't showing. Uh, and that's a good warning to have. Don't hit don't show again uh, because you want to be warned. It's really easy to have text uh, that's overflowing. You've moved stuff around and then suddenly all of your text isn't showing. So this is a good last minute reminder. So just hit OK in our case. And we've made a PDF. So let's take a look at that. So it would be demo Lagan project dot INDD. That's your InDesign project. So that's what you work on. And at the end, you save the PDF, which is a high quality print PDF. So I'm going to just click double click on it to open it up. It opens up in previews. So here's page one. Here's the two page spread. And here's the back page. Okay, so you can see here are the crop marks and here are the bleed marks. So if we're over here, then this is telling the crop marks, it telling the, uh, the cutting machine to cut right there. So there's a little extra in case it's not entirely accurate. And this is the bleed marks where everything lines up on the outside. And this crop mark in the middle shows where the page divide is. So that's it.